This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on today's episode, we're looking at more grimdark weaponry of Space Marine 2. Okay, here's the bolt pistol. So, you mentioned C96 to me. I think I can see that. Obviously, it's lacking the iconic long spindly barrel of the broom handle, but if we were to, God forbid, cut that off <laughs> and use the short magazine, it definitely has a, a vibe of that. This is part two of us taking a look at the weapons of Space Marine 2, this time featuring more melter and plasma weaponry, but be sure to check out episode one to see us chatting about all things bolt rifle. And be sure to stay tuned until the end for a little Q&A with Jonathan. If there are any games or guns you'd like to see on the show, be sure to let us know, like the video if you enjoy, but without further ado, it's over to Jonathan. Ever so slight Nerf gun vibe from the pistol grip and trigger arrangement, which is probably coming to mind because of the rotating breachy energy thing above it. Just a little bit hint of Nerf Maverick about this. Yeah, it's like a it's like a plasma revolver. One little cue I've noticed on a few of these guns is that oval loop with two kind of rivets or whatever they are at either end. It was on one of the bolters sideways and it's on this vertically. And it's just a greebly to make it look less smooth and featureless but it kind of uh, it's interesting to see it appear on different weapons especially as those are kinetic chemical propellant based guns and this is an energy weapon but this is professional overthinking that you're watching here so i love that you can be a sword and shield knight sort of space marine and still get a gun yes just because the shield is mounted to your wrist and forearm rather than having to hold it in your hand that is cool i was about to say that so combining combining all three of our disciplines, armor, edge weapons, and firearms. Well, guns, <laughs> to, to include artillery. I wonder if they could have gone a, even a little further and incorporated one of the cutouts in, I know the shield is meant to be a cross, but one of the cutouts in the shield is almost like a firing port that you can lock the pistol into. Oh, Jonathan, that exists. That's a thing. Right. There's it's, a it's in our world <laughs> too. You've grasped onto things that you're like yeah yeah 40k's done it because of course okay. it has but well, um, yeah there's squads called breaches i think they're called where oh, they've, right. they have a full-size bolt gun and a shield and rest the bolt gun in the shield and okay. shoot it's not in the game unfortunately but um but i didn't could... realize that was the that was a real thing so again i don't know if they would have seen this it's something very obvious that you would think of especially if you've seen riot shields with firing ports in them later on in history but uh, we have a number of the Tudor period gun shields which are breech loading matchlock pistols mounted in the center of a round Italian made shield we have a number on display at the, uh, well some on display at the Tower of London and we have some here in Leeds as well so they're like a 1540s equivalent of, of that same idea but you only get the one shot the issue there is you have to either look over your shield at which point you get shot in the head or with a lot of them there's a little grill firing uh, viewport sorry above the firing port that the gun is locked into it's always fun to kind of look for the historical parallels to this stuff whether or not the creatives have been uh, inspired by them. Okay, plasma incinerator. We have a design language thing here with the plasma guns. There's that copper colored ring around the muzzle, the rotating, I'll call it a breech. It isn't really on top. Looks like this has two spare ones. No, not spare ones. I'm guessing they're feeding from below. This has a stock, interestingly, or a butt plate anyway. Uh, sorry, not, not a copper ring. It's like a um, bore copper alloy looking lines around the muzzle. And obviously the glowing blue ribbed chamber thing. The front iron sight on that thing oh i think there might be a hole through the carrying handle for using that site now i have had people tell me that uh, space marines have aiming devices in their helmets which i'm sure is true but okay so why do they have iron sights then and why are these guys all trying to look through sights and why do scopes exist the main characters don't wear helmets and that was the other thing <laughs> some of them have invisible monocle looking things a lot of them don't so how are they aiming? Are they just so good that they aim by instinct? Point shooting? That was a thing for a while. I just think it's interesting that when you aim down sights, the Space Marine with a helmet on also aims down sights. There'd, re there'd really be no reason to do that if you have an aiming system in your helmet. In fact, really, the holy grail of small arms 
shooting, military shooting anyway, is a, a, a HUD in your helmet with all with all of the bells and whistles you would want, bullet drop compensator, range finding, thermal, the lot, and you can just bring the gun up and wherever the reticle is, is where the bullet will land or as close as you can get it. So you don't have your own weapon and your own limbs, hands, whatever, in the way. So your field of view is the full field of view and you can even zoom in within that. I would expect 40,000 years in the future, something like that to exist. A bit like Gears of War. Sorry to bring that up, Dave. Uh, I know this came first. But this thing has a buttstock, but it isn't being utilized, just like in Gears of War, <laughs> when they do have buttstocks, which isn't often. Yeah, that um, bridge sight rail thing is reminiscent of a few different real guns. Uh, well, you know, G36, maybe even the P90, something that where you have something going on under the, the rail that you have to bridge over and then with a hole through the front and back to allow you to use the sights. The heavy version f works more like a grenade launcher once you've charged it up. It's got a big yeah. splash. And, a, and an arc as well. In fact, the sight reticle on screen is indicative of that as well. Okay, here's the bolt pistol. So you mentioned C96 to me, and I think I can see that. So I've gone with a, a Schnell Poya for the detachable magazine. Although to be fair, on the, on that one, I could have gone with the detachable short magazine because it's much more flush fit. The one I picked up had the longer magazine on it. Obviously, it's lacking the iconic long spindly barrel of the broom handle. But if we were to, God forbid, cut that off <laughs> and use the short magazine, it definitely has a, a vibe of that. But again, it's a scaled down version of what we've seen. All, almost all the same design cues. Magazine wells open at the front, which is interesting. I'm not sure why you would do that. There also isn't a visible means of locking the magazine in. So this this has the a lug at the back, a lug at the front, like an AK or a Galil or similar. The magazine in the game just kind of floats there in situ and then drops out when you need it to drop out. There isn't a there isn't a hole in the body to hold it in like on an AR. That little detail on the back, because it just reminds me so much of a toggle lock. As I'm firing, I just I I feel like that should be moving or something. If you if this was the first weapon you encountered and you'd never seen anything like it, you would assume I, I would be saying why is that hammer not moving? But it's, if we look at it the other way around, again, depending how it's represented on figures and things, it's the same thing that's on the bigger bolt guns scaled down in size. So whatever it does, it doesn't move. The thing you're thinking of absolutely does. As the bolt comes back, back, we can lock it open on the magazine. As the bolt comes back, one of the things it does is to cock the hammer. But that ain't a hammer. That's something else. I do wonder if that's where they get the, the detail on the back from, inspiration from the... the c96 or the luger or something it depends i mean you'd, i think you'd have to look at the the design history like did it did that feature first appear on a bolt pistol and then get added to the other bolt guns or did it go the other way around or you could ask them <laughs> wow that's elaborate we've got some laurel leaves skulls chains wings Oh, I see. So I, I took those to be ribbons. They're actually little um, prayers or uh, bits of uh, parchment hanging off those seals. Actually, even more like our seal patterns. The later ones come off the guns and get stuck to wool felt backed paper labels. And they don't look a million miles away from, the, from these. But instead of um, whatever's on these, they are the nomenclature of what the thing is, what it represents, when it was sealed, when it was changed, that kind of thing. So they're, they're little um, historical documents that hang off the guns. Okay, what do we have here? It's like an incinerator type thingy. This is the Melter rifle. Ah, the Melter. Yeah. You right. spoke about the Melter on yes. the gun before. This is the Primaris version of the Melter. Okay. Very reminiscent of the plasma weapon with the rotatey thing and the additional non-rotatey thing on the bottom. <laughs> but that vented muzzle, I remember from the from the previous game, and I think other 40k games, uh, marks it out as not a plasma weapon. The grip on the top of the gun is a bit bizarre. That kind of really messes with your field of view for no good reason. That, that grip should be on the side. Okay, we've got a reload there. Not clear what's coming out of that thing or how it gets into the gun. Looks like two electrical contact 
robes at the top of it almost similar to space marine one this this is very much the the shotgun of of the game an armor piercing superheated shotgun yeah and to that end I, I maybe would have gone with the saw grip that we see on some certainly some youtube videos <laughs> shotguns where the there's a, a a bridge grip that is attached either side of the pump grip and you can rack it from the top here they've gone for a vertical grip sticking out the top of the gun just looks a little bit weird but it changes up how it's used i get the impression aiming isn't that essential with this no it's uh when you're close enough, it's very much a to whom it may concern weapon. Definite incendiary effects going on when they get hit. Yeah, it does a, does a good job punching through armoured enemy space marines. Oh, okay. So that the grip on the top is angleable forward, fore and aft. So you can grip it differently. Reminds me a little of the, um, the barrel grip on the Bren gun, or the um, ZB-26 onwards, which is mainly for taking the barrel on and off, but can be locked in a different position for, anti -air for an anti-aircraft grip or even for firing from the hip, as some guys used it for. Two melter-looking uh, barrels on this thing. It's the multi-melter. Of course. But only one spinny thing, but four hoses <laughs> attached to that. Oh, yeah, we have, we have eight little hoses feeding four bigger hoses that go into the back of the gun and then there's a second hose underneath which almost looks like some sort of ignition thing for a flamethrower but it's not a flamethrower i know there's a lot going on on this Okay, I remember the heavy bolter from the first game. We've, we've got the top grip again, a sort of um, on steroids version of the box mag, or is it, it is more like a belt box on this, or it certainly feels like one. But I don't, I don't think the rounds are actually belted together, as far as I can see, which raises the question of how they feed into the gun. It'd have to be some sort of clockwork system or magic or maglev, who knows? But you either need a spring driving the thing or you need the gun pulling a belt into itself. So why does that have hoses leading from the backpack? What are those hoses doing? I would have thought a version of the classic backpack ammo pack would have made more sense. Although obviously they have to keep the design loosely of the gun that they're basing it on from other versions of the gun. But they could have had that fed by uh, an ammo shoot from the backpack. Which people keep trying to invent as I think I said last time. I would have to guess some sort of cooling maybe, but I think it's just rule of cool here. Interesting charge up there. Using the scope, which is good. Always like to see the scope view used for something. That's quite, that's a little bit of a change up. Still has the same kind of, I keep saying design language, which sounds very pretentious, but it does. But the front end is changed up and the magazine arrangement is very different. Remember the, the last cannon from Space Marine 1? Yes. So this yeah. is the last fusil, which I think, yeah, I think I is an old word for a musket, a light musket. Yeah, basically. Uh, I won't bore you to death, but uh, it cha meaning changed over time. But it, yeah, it's from the French for a fire, for a tinder lighter, and it originally applied to flintlocks, and it's still the French word for for rifle. But this is like the the sniper rifle version of a las cannon. No, e even my amateur eye um, gets the the las cannon vibe from this, even though the back end looks very boltery. Uh, I think by deleting that AK looking magazine. Well, not AK looking, but Kerbin magazine, and giving it that long, slightly energy weapon looking barrel assembly, you immediately get a different read on what it's supposed to be. That and the great big uh, laser beam coming out at the end of it. <laughs> it's a bit of a giveaway. Somebody pointed out in a video recently that, of course, even the sniper in 40k has to carry a, a huge knife and get into melee at every opportunity. Of course. Of course. Well, uh, not without precedent. I mean, Vasily Zaitsev is supposed to have got a number of his kills with a submachine gun, if not a knife. You need something for up close. Admittedly, it's usually not a knife, per se. Biological incursion of a generator one. We've been asking viewers to leave questions for Jonathan and the Expert Reacts team, so now that we've taken a look at most of Space Marine 2's weapons, it's over to some of your questions. Alright, so the first question from Ian Ross, 8083. 
Is there a gun in the collection at the museum that you've always wanted to fire but can't for one reason or another? Yeah, um, probably more than one. But the one that comes to mind, um, I was fortunate already to, to get to shoot a few years ago the 7.62 EM2 ball, British bullpup that I've written about quite a bit. And that was fantastic. But I would love to shoot the <laughs> 280 slash 7 millimeter, the original version, the one that everyone kind of daydreams about, well, not everyone, a few people <laughs> daydream about as being uh, what what you could have won to um, reference a British video uh, game show. There are various, well, the main reason for that is that although we have a number of them, they're all different, they're all in different states of repair, it would require some serious thoughts and some ammo, which we do have somewhere, but we don't have available yet. So it may, it's one that might happen one day, but I'd have to do some paperwork around it and uh, meet with some people to make it happen. So if it ever happens, I'd be very, very happy to to do that one. Of course, it was an EM2. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I could have guessed that. <laughs> I have shot one. I just haven't shot that time. My <laughs> <laughs> right, next question from William Heng 4801 What got Jonathan into firearms and what set that interest in motion? My dad was uh, into similar things when he was... Uh, in his, I guess, 20s, and he had books on the usual sort of planes, trains, automobiles kind of thing, uh, military history. And one of his books in particular was one of the Ian Hogg books, Big Boy's Book of Firearms kind of thing. Uh, there was an EM2 in that, by the way. And I would read that through cover to cover over and over again. So I had a very early, this would have would have been seven or something at the, at the uh, oldest when I <laughs> first found that interesting. And an observer's book, little observer's book of firearms as well. And I would again page through that because we had no internet in those days. <laughs> that was that was the start of my interest. And uh, it was many years later that I, I, I never thought I'd be able to convert that into a job, but here we are. This is from Vince W187. If Jonathan would make a shooter, what weird collection of unusual firearms would he include? It depends, would be the answer there. Uh, if it was any kind of historical setting or specific real world present day setting, I would be slavishly trying to incorporate only the only the guns available at that time and in that place. If it was something more sci-fi or let, let's say a mercenary based thing, which is potentially <laughs> a difficult one to tackle, obviously the, the options increase. Something like Jagged Alliance, say, one of my favorite um, series. I then end up with a, a load of difficult... Uh, I, I still would be bound by by reality, what's likely to be available in that setting. And it would probably be a bit dull because everyone would be running around with AR-15s and Glocks. I'd probably try and get around that by incorporating as many different guns as possible, much like Jagged Alliance has always tried to do. And then you can choose to buy dissimilar weapons for your guys. So, so I'd, I'd want to please everyone with variety, but I would be kitting people out with much the same stuff as they kind of are in the real world. From Gatling Gunman, or Gunman, what type of episode do you prefer? Ones where they're going for accuracy to real life guns, one that use real life guns as inspiration with some fantastical elements added on, or ones that are complete fantasy and you're basically trying to apply logic to their designs. I think I think it depends there as well. Uh, it depends on my mood. Depends how many we've done of, of each of those three. I think because we've done so many sort of nitpicky, that's not quite right, actually. I think you'll find episodes, which I still enjoy, and I think some of you still enjoy as well, um, that I I like to I like to turn my hand to critiquing original designs and i think i'm i lean toward the probably the second of those so the the things that are grounded in reality but are original that's really exciting and especially if people are trying to make them function there's no real need to do that but it's fascinating if they do and i know some artists and animators love to do that uh, i'm in touch with the guy who uh designed the the new pulse rifle for alien romulus and i know he was he didn't have to do it and it, it wouldn't factor into anything because it's a it's not a functioning firearm in there but he tried to come up with a working caseless system for that and i think that's wonderful and to be encouraged and i will gladly try to help people <laughs> that make plausible new guns there's a peek behind the curtain but i so when, when I'm planning out episodes, I'm consciously aware of like if we've done 
a bunch of Milsim in a row or a bunch of sci-fi in a row. So I'm like, Jonathan needs a break. I need a break. And it's like, it's, it's important for, it's important variety for the viewers as well. So you won't see us do like yeah. Tarkov, then squad, then armor. Like we, we, it's important to, to have, to have that variety. But I think that, yes. um, that comment has nailed the sort of three main pillars of the types of, of games that we do show. Yeah. But I think the real answer is we need all of those. Because if we, if we, uh, if I just picked if I, that favorite that I've arbitrarily picked there, which will probably change next week. If we only did those, I think it would get stale. Um, but I think it would get the stalest if all I did was critiques stuff that's from history or the present day. Um, yeah, but I don't ever want to not do that. <laughs> the cursed guns serve a purpose. <laughs> the cursed stuff sometimes goes goes beyond the pale, but that's the fun, I guess. See where that line is. All right, guys. Well, I haven't been waiting for that as long as Dave has, but I was anticipating it uh, pretty hard myself. Good, good stuff there. Hope you enjoyed it. Those were the guns of Space Marine 2. Uh, special request, if I may. Our equivalent, really, in Australia, the Lithgow Small Arms Factory Museum, uh, recently had a number of guns stolen, sadly, uh, historic firearms, and they would love to recover any of those if they can. Please do spread the news if you have any contacts, uh, law enforcement, on down to anyone that might might spot one come up at a sale or something, be offered something for sale. Um, they or we can provide a list of what's missing if you suspect something. So we'd love to help them out if we can. Um, other than that, please do check out our website and our socials, and we'll see you again here at GameSpot next week.